Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. It's going to be a great show. Can't wait today. We got a good friend and colleague, Dr. Randall Spare from Ashland, Kansas, and Ashland Veterinary Center, and we're going to talk about how to select a bull for your herd. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed captioning is brought to you by ProFusion Drench for Beef Cattle, a no prescription, no needle supplement. To learn more, go to zenpro.com. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Thanks for joining us today. Today, I'm going to have a friend, a dear friend and colleague, Dr. Randall Spare. He is the owner and operator of Ashland Veterinary Center down in Ashland, Kansas. He is probably one of the most world renowned. Uh, cow calf and seed stock veterinarians and today he's going to be on the show with us sharing his expertise on how you select a bull for your herd. Thanks Dan for the opportunity to, to talk a little bit about uh, bull selection for the coming year and uh, in the next six months there will be a tremendous amount of bulls that will be sold and, and as producers now we have the opportunity to sit back and, and reflect about what are our goals when we uh, purchase a bull. What do we look for? There's so many different parameters today in seed stock production about uh, the size and the kind, the shape of bulls uh, that we can purchase for our cow herd. But before we, we get to that point of deciding going to a sale, we have to ask ourselves, what are our goals as a producer? And I think there are several things that, that play, in, in, play into that or when do we? When are we planning on selling those calves? Do we sell them at weaning time? And who's going to buy them? Do we sell them at 800 pounds or do we sell them at, at harvest time? And so I think that it's important to, to know when we're going to sell and who our customer really is. And many times people think, well, I'm going to sell at weaning time, so it doesn't really matter what kind of carcass qualities they have or what kind of growth they have. I just want to sell as many pounds of beef pounds walking out the ranch and once they leave it doesn't really matter. But I think Dan we have to remember that somebody is going to own those and they want to capture more value that's in those cattle. So it's more than just what kind of weaning weight we have. So we have to understand what our goals are, who's our client. The other part of the equation is what are the resources that we have on our ranch to make those cattle healthy as possible so that the next person can uh, be successful with them also. So Dan, one of the things that this particular group of bulls that I really like and I think it's so important is if we pan across these, this, these animals, we don't really see a nervous animal in this, this group. One of the things that uh, all breeds have is a docility score. Temperament is so important uh, none of us are getting any younger, and uh, safety is real important, and temperament uh, is well defined within each breed, and we can choose to go find animals that are in the top percentile for docility, no matter what color breed, whether it's Hereford or Angus or Red Angus or Charlet or, or the other breeds. Temperament is, is part of that equation that allows us to get the most out of their genetic potential. And so I think that it's real important to, to find bulls that are going to be, uh, that are tame and easy to work with. Great information, Dr. Randall, as always. 
uh, folks, when you're thinking about buying a bull, remember, think about what your goals are. Think about uh, who you're going to sell those calves to, who you're going to, when you're going to sell your calves. And then as Dr. Spare said, you know, none of us are getting any younger. Docility is not only important so they don't chase you up a fence, but it also helps with building that trust between you and your animals so that they tell you when they're sick. So many more things to come with Dr. Spare in Ashland, Kansas. Producers know stress costs money. It puts their cattle at greater risk of illness and can be a substantial drain on animal performance. That's why ZenPro developed ProFusion Drench for Beef Cattle. Formulated with ZenPro's patented trace mineral technology, ProFusion Drench is a no script, no needle performance supplement proven to rapidly replenish essential nutrients lost during times of stress. For optimal results, use ProFusion Drench with ZenPro Performance Minerals in feed as part of a complete nutrition program. To learn more, go to ZenPro.com. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here at Iowa State University. And now we're going to jump up, we're going to beam over to Ashland, Kansas. And we're going to be there with Dr. Randall Spare who is a veterinarian, uh, probably one of the best veterinarians I know for seed stock and, and just bovine medicine in general. And he's so good for our industry. Uh, somebody, if you have a chance, stop through Ashland or give him a call to be a speaker for one of your uh, events. But let's bump back out to Ashland where we're going to talk about where do you get started when you're going to pick that bull. So, so Dan, one of the things I'd really like to talk with you about and I'm passionate about is, is uh, when we look at... Uh, the first place to start uh, when choosing a bull is looking at calving ease direct. And uh, no matter the breed, calving ease is king. And each year we, we have this discussion with our producers, how high a calving ease direct do we need to use? And uh, I think we have to understand from a, from a veterinary standpoint, birth is the most critical time period uh, in that calf's life, because if we have a difficult birth uh, and the calf is stressed, the cow is stressed, her production of colostrum is, is decreased, uh, the calf's ability to get up and nurse is decreased, the stress of calving allows, doesn't allow the, the uh, absorption of colostrum, so calving ease is king. And we have an opportunity each year to choose the bulls that we have problem-free calving. And, and I think it's important to, to each producer to set a standard of what's the threshold of calving ease direct that we're gonna choose. I think that, in, for instance, in the, in the black Angus industry, I like to tell people we, need, we can stay at 13 or above. That's in the top four or 5% of calving ease. And when our seed stock producers uh, commit to that kind of discipline to have calving ease that's high, as well as uh, uh, growth bulls that are high, we can choose calving ease bulls that have a lot of growth that actually we can use those on our mature cow herd. So those are the type of, of language that I uh, learned to use in describing uh, calving ease. Uh, calving ease is king in any program. Years ago when I uh, worked with a producer that uh, we did, uh, it, in fact it was a winter of 92 and 93, we calved out uh, 130 head of heifers, and I know that I did 10 cesareans. And I said, you know, it doesn't have to be this way. Well, well, I, I can't afford a bull that, that has calving ease. I said, mm, I think you can afford a bull that has a lower birth weight and therefore uh, uh, fewer problems calving. And that ranch today calves out 130 head of heifers. They do it with two people. They don't check them but once or twice a day. and uh, they have very little difficulty because they've taken the, the high road of having the discipline to use calving ease. So I learned uh, early on if we use, uh, if, if EPDs work with calving ease direct, why don't they work with yearling weight or weaning weight or yearling height or yearling weight? Um, we can actually describe the kind of cow and create the kind of cow that can be successful 
if we use each one of those parameters that is described in any of these breeds, we can make a cow that works best for our ranch and then produce a calf that's going to be healthy and, and grow well every day. So our goal is really even as choosing a bull, it goes back to how can we create a calf that's going to be every day is going to be a good day in the life of that calf so that when he grows old, he'll be very productive. Wow. Isn't that some great information from Dr. Randall Spare? Calving knees is king. It always amazed me that with what we can put together with EPDs, whether it's for yearling weight or for, for weaning weight or for maternal or, or for calving knees, it only makes sense that if we put it all together, you can use calving knees bulls on mature cows, which improves the, the, decreases the stress on the calf, decreases the stress on the cow, increases colostrum intake, gives you better health, and you wind up with a better product and you get the performance too. It's getting to know your homework, understanding exactly what it is you want when you're working with those EPDs, understanding what it is you want to buy, and otherwise it is going to help you to, you know, they always told me, pick the cow to match your environment and pick the bull to match your market. So much truth in that. Thank you, Dr. Randall. We'll come right back to Ashland after these messages. The state of Iowa and Iowa State University are proud to host the 2021 Beef Improvement Federation Annual Research Symposium and Convention. The convention will be located in downtown Des Moines with easy access to the airport, hotels, and local restaurants. Iowa State University is just north with its research and teaching farms. Join us in Iowa and experience how Iowa provides the beef industry with innovation to application. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here at Iowa State University, and today we're in Ashland, Kansas. And we're having a discussion out there on the plains with Dr. Randall Spare, and he's going to talk a little bit about understanding the disease pressures or things that happen geographically in other areas of the United States when you go and buy a bull and then you bring it back home. So Dan, one of the things when, we, uh, when we're picking bulls, we have tools today uh, that make it very specific on uh, the selection criteria. For instance, when we all buy a pickup or a, a tractor or maybe a car, we know the exact specifications that are in those, how many horsepower, how fast it will go. We know uh, obviously what color it is, how big a tires. They're very specific. The great thing about cattle today is we have, uh, we can create those same specifications using EPDs. EPDs stand for expected progeny of difference. Those are benchmarks and records of what, how these animals are going to perform and what their offspring are. Wouldn't it be uh, better today as if we, we could go to a, a group of bulls and we could look at them and we can define what kind of growth is appropriate for our herd or what kind of calving ease. And we can choose to look at percentiles in the, in the various breeds to help make those choices. So that when, when we go to, back to our goals of who are we going to sell to? That when, when we describe that these are out of top 5% red Angus bulls or top 5% black Angus bulls, that's better than having the description of, well, these are sure enough good kind of cattle with a lot of bone under them. So that description is not quantifiable at all. But if we know that they're out of top 5% growth, they're out of top 5% carcass uh, EPDs of, of marbling and ribeye and carcass weight, we know that those cattle are going to perform in the feed yard, and then they're also going to give us excellent carcasses, and so that when we get paid for those, we'll have some carcass merit that will add value to our animals. So at the same time, we can also look at yearling height, mature height, mature weight, uh, temperament, how much milk they're going to produce, uh, the offspring will produce, and we can use those benchmarks in uh, how we're going to choose that bull and if I think if a, we choose a bull that 
maybe goes to, is it going to go to New Mexico versus one that, to central Missouri? We may need to choose a bull that's going to have less milk production uh, in New Mexico than it will be in, in Missouri. So our, our geographic resources play a big part in, in the bull selection. And that's the good thing today. When we uh, pick up a bull catalog and we can compare apples to apples, one herd to the next, we can find those animals that will best fit our needs. And then if we know what our price point is, we can go there and we can bid until we, we get what we need, or we can choose to go private treaty. Uh, there's many opportunities. Uh, many of our producers have learned that there's plenty of opportunity for some direct marketing, particularly if they know exactly what's under the hide of these cattle, and that's where EPDs can become involved. We have, we have pr producers that ask for bulls that are, that are high marbling, and so that their cattle will grade prime so that then when they take them to the local slaughter plant and they can sell those cattle with great confidence that it's going to be a great eating experience for someone. And those, those choices, Dan, come from the fact, uh, or those opportunities come from the fact that the choices that they made when selecting their bulls will give them confidence that the, that the consumer will have a great eating experience. And I think as a whole, that's something that all of us, all of, in beef production, in protein production, need to create an animal so that the eating experience, that when he gives his life, to be eaten, that that eating experience for that consumer is, is really good. So, and those opportunities come from making the right choices from in EPD selections. Such great information, Dr. Sparrow. And as you think about this, we have the tools today to increase information. EPDs are facts. EPDs are science. We, this is based on data from these progeny. You don't have to guess or ha take a line of BS. When you go in there, you, have, you know what you want to buy, you know the data and the attributes of the bull you want, and you know your price point. Get in that auction, have some fun, bring home the bull to build that proper cow in your herd, and understand that there are producers out there, seed stock producers out there, that want to work with you private treaty. You don't have to buy everything at the auction or everything online. You can go out and just make a bid and talk to somebody because they want to help you build your herd. Thanks so much. We're going to come back with a wrap-up with Dr. Spare after these messages. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do, every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan here. We're heading to Ashland, Kansas, to Ashland Veterinary Center, where there's just one of the world's best veterinary clinics. And we're going to be with one of the world's best bovine veterinarians, Dr. Randall Spare. And he's going to talk to us about, you know, after you buy that bull and you get it home, your job's not done and you have a lot of responsibility to take care of those genetics. Dan, one of the things that uh, it, it's, uh, I enjoy my job, I enjoy the relationships that I've been able to develop with, with seed stock producers and also commercial producers. And I would say that when, when you're getting ready to go buy bulls, maybe one of the things that'd be important to do is to, to, to bring your veterinarian along and and ask them what are what are conditions or things that I need to be concerned about when I go across the country or uh, across the county to purchase a bull. Uh, involving your relationship with your local veterinarian to help understand what the disease pressures that, that we need to, to be concerned about when we go buy bulls from maybe, maybe it's several states away. So oftentimes you may be, uh, if you're living in uh, in Missouri or Mississippi or, or, or uh, Georgia, and you're buying a bull from Kansas, what are the challenges of, of taking an animal from the Midwest back to the East Coast or even from uh, Kansas to, to Southern Texas? 
what disease pressures do we have that they may not have there? And having an open dialogue uh, with your veterinarian and also maybe the veterinarian of, of a seed stock production. And I think the more that we can include more people in that discussion, the more satisfied you are going to be with your purchases of, uh, of bulls. And so I counted a privilege when when people call me and ask me how are these bulls and what are what's the vaccination program that they've been under and so that we can hand those off and in that handoff process they can uh, do well oftentimes i find that people take bulls home that are that are have plenty of condition on them they think they need to feed them hard uh, put a lot of carbohydrates in them in actuality they just need to give them a high quality forage and allow them to uh, to, to be acclimated to your uh, program and, and the grass, grass program that you might have. Dan, one of the things that uh, uh, I find myself uh, being responsible for as a veterinarian for seed stock producers is that often I will get calls and, uh, from these uh, new owners that say, well, this, this bull's not doing well, it's not, uh, it's not uh, <clears throat> gaining weight. And we'll go through the scenarios of so have, have we done this? Have we, uh, how are we feeding it? How are we taking care of it? So as, as a bull buyer, and you take that animal home, what's he need? So we often forget that a bull that's 18 months of age, he's basically starting to get his two mature teeth on the bottom. And then he'll get another set a year later. And uh, so those bulls go home and they're challenged from an eating standpoint when they're 18 months of age, they may not have been involved, exposed to very many parasites. So if they go home and uh, you're east, we, we call it east of I-35 and south of I-40, when there's more internal parasites, and uh, we may need to consider a, a, a worming, a strategic worming program that will allow those, those animals that basically come from a, a parasite-free environment to one that's, that's heavily parasite, uh, ridden, we may need to deworm those cattle. We also need to be concerned about uh, uh, if your area is, is endemic with anaplasmosis or what are your disease pressures and did your, those bulls that you purchased come from an area that, that don't have those diseases. So just like when we buy a car, we take it home and we service it, these animals need the same sort of service mentality as, as our vehicles because we do make a great investment in uh, in these bulls and when uh, the the other the other thing that we need to consider when you choose a a seed stock producer to purchase your bulls is which seed stock producer is going to help you the most how are they going to help you get the most value out of those bulls and how well do they service it? What's their guarantee look like? And uh, having those conversations up front with your seed stock producer will help you get the most out of your investment. Hey folks, wasn't that a great show today? I just thank the world to Dr. Spare, his family, uh, the Gardner family, everybody down there in Ashland, Kansas. What a tremendous, how well they've treated uh, my family and, and me uh, for many, many years. Just as we wrap up, you know, know your goals, know who you're selling your bulls, your calves to, know when you're selling your calves. Uh, two things that are king when it comes to selecting a bull, you want docility and you want calving ease. Those were things that were very obvious today from, from Dr. Spare. Also understand that EPDs cut through the BS. EPDs are facts, EPD are science, EPDs are theory. And, and you can take that when you know what you wanna buy and you know the attributes that you want to bring into your herd, it's not some story, it's, it's, it's right there. So learn them yourself or work with your veterinarian or, or work with, with someone who can help you with making those selections to make the best animals in your herd. Also understand if you're buying bulls from some other place, have your veterinarian get involved. Have them talk to the veterinarians of where you buy the bull so that you understand that, that when that animal's coming in, what disease pressure, parasite pressure, prior plane of nutrition, all the above, uh, to help that animal make a smooth transition into your herd. And then understand, lastly, once that animal gets to your ranch, that's when, when the work really begins. You want to make sure that you are, uh, you don't just bring that animal home and put it in a dry lot or just take it out and put it in the pasture. 
you've got to make sure that you're getting proper vaccinations, proper deworming, um, proper nutrition, uh, proper shelter, all the things that go into husbandry. So, so at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's just so much information. It's, it's just mind boggling to put all this into one show, but you know, know what you want to select, understand EPDs, work with your veterinarian, work with the veterinarian of the person that you're buying the, the bull from, have a business plan, um, and, and have a plan from selection of the bull to the husbandry of that bull when it gets on your ranch. Thank you, Dr. Randall, for all you do for all of us. Folks, if you want to know more about what we do here at Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson with Dr. Randall Spare, and we'll see you down the road. Closed captioning is brought to you by ProFusion Drench for Beef Cattle, a no prescription, no needle supplement. To learn more, go to zenpro.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.